Hey everyone, welcome to NASCAR America. Marty Snyder, Jeff Burton joining you here after Christopher Bell's, you could say, dominant win at Phoenix Raceway and maybe a preview for the championship. We'll get to that in a second. But Jeff, is it fair to call it a dominant win and maybe a signature win for Christopher Bell? Yeah, Marty, I do think that's fair. I, th I think most important, though, if you look back at last year and you think about Christopher Bell's year, it was disappointment, 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 even when running well, right? Remember all the conversations about pit crew, all the conversations about not being able to finish out races. He finishes a year, goes into championship battle, has the problem at Phoenix, getting into turn three, starts this year, can't avoid trouble, having all kinds of issues. And it just felt like there's a black cloud over the 20. And you know that's how they felt. That's what teams do. And then to go out and win this race and get themselves locked into the playoffs for next year, unless something crazy happens, get themselves locked into playoffs for this year, now they can take a breath. Now they can say, you know what? We can do this. We can overcome. We can make this stuff happen. And I think for Christopher Bell, he was so frustrated last year that this will lighten the load a little bit. This will let him race freely. This will let him focus on how do we get better rather than what's wrong with us right now. How do we get better when we, when we start the playoffs? And I think a prepared Christopher Bell, a positive Christopher Bell, I think he's very dangerous. Clearly, Joe Gibbs racing, they have their stuff together. They always mm -hmm. seem to. So I think this win has tons of positive momentum uh, for the 20 team moving in, moving through the rest of the year. And maybe even more significant that they overcame the pit issues mid-race as well to, to, go, to go on a win. So you mentioned the strength of Joe Gibbs racing. Obviously, the, the championship, Jeff, is eight months away. So let's couch everything in this conversation. But from the looks of, of, of the race on Sunday at Phoenix, is this Toyota's championship to lose as of right now if they have cars in the championship four? Well, look, I wouldn't have said Ryan Blaney was going to win a championship last year at this point. So I'm definitely not going to say that Toyota's going to win it this year. Uh, so much is going to change. Uh, you think about the last two championships. Uh, they got won both by Penske drivers. They got hot at the right time. Uh, I certainly, uh, I, I just know how hard these teams work. I know how drivers make adjustments. Uh, I in no way am going to sit here today and tell you who who can win this race uh, or even who can make the playoffs that we don't already know about. There's just so much that's going to change throughout this year. But if you're a Toyota, you've got to be encouraged by what you saw on Sunday. Well, you certainly you'd rather do what you did Sunday than what than not, right? And yeah. uh, you know Chevrolet had gotten all the wins until this weekend. Uh, you know we kept hearing how good Christopher Bell was at the test out there. Um, you know, there was a there was a change aerodynamically to the car. And anytime something like that happens, we've seen in the past, someone hits it, right? And the Toyotas did a great job of hitting it, and Chris Rell took advantage of it. Well, Jeff, I you know, if you're Paul Wolf and Joey Logano, if you're Austin Dillon and his team, I mean, it's crazy to say this just a handful of races into the season. Is it must win time? I mean, Logano can't seem to catch a break, but certainly Austin Dillon. Cannot catch a break at all so far in 2024. Yeah, Austin Dillon, my goodness. I mean, he, you know, he he's he's just been in the wrong place, wrong time over and over and over. Got involved in this wreck. Uh, you know, Krause spins in front of in front of this group and just nowhere for him to go. Um, you know, Austin Dillon, man, he they gotta find a way to get some positive energy going on over there. They did not have a good year last year. Uh, this team's you know, more importantly. You know, teammate Kyle Busch did not run well yesterday. He did not have the pace. Neither one of these cars had the pace this weekend. That's a larger concern, uh, really, in my eyes, rather than just one race finish. Joey Logano, you know, I, you know, he's he did not run well yesterday either. I mean, he did get in a wreck, but he got in a wreck. And, you know, I'm not sure if he cracked. He really, I'm not sure that he ever had top 20 speed. Uh, you know, he, he, he just... In the race, he didn't. I thought in practice on Friday, I thought he did. But when the race started, uh, it wasn't there. And then, of course, you know, he got run into from behind by Nemechek and ended his day. But to your point, you know, is this team good enough to go win? Uh, you know, right now, I, I question that. I question if they're good enough to go win. Um, you know, they struggled last year, uh, which, you know, again, they struggled really, you know, so did Blaney. But he found a way to win and uh, win the championship ultimately. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's you, you, it's hard to say that Joey Logano, um, is a team that's in a must win situation, but 30th in points, right? Mm -hmm. If you get if you get a lot of winners, like I would suspect we will, like we have been getting, there may be only one, two, three spots open for points. 
So, yes, I think that they are in a must win situation. That's wild to say that, but you get in that, you get a ton of winners. And, you know, remember, you could be sixth, seventh in points and not make the playoffs if you haven't won a race. We've seen it before. Yeah. Saw Martin Truex. He didn't make the playoffs and had a, he didn't have a great year going, but he had a very solid year going. So, but yes, third in the points and didn't make playoffs. Exactly. And, and that's exactly the point. So you're 30th now and you've got to make up points against those guys that aren't 30th that you're going to that you're going to be racing for in points if you can't win. So, yes, it is a must win. Uh, some get right days, if you will, for RFK. I mean, it, it, how encouraging is that for Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher to have top fives? Oh, you can see it on their faces. You know, when the race is over, uh, you know, I, I, th I think, too, you know, uh, Brad did not qualify well. He was back. He was back, you know, toward the back was able to drive through the field. Uh, Busher, he was able to drive through the field on that last run. I think he restarted 10th or, or in that range. And that's what feels good, right? When you can have forward momentum, you can be passing cars. You have the speed to make that happen. That's, that's, what they, that's what they can really feel good about. You know, Marty, you can have, you can have a fourth place finish and you're like, uh, we kind of we stole that one. But in this case, I think they had the speed and they were able to pass cars. And I think, I think that makes them feel really good. Well, it's the concrete at Bristol this week coming up. Busher, a former winner at Bristol. So we'll be here next week to break, out, break it all down of who won the race at Bristol Motor Speedway next week. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.